Hello everyone, this is Aaron. Um, today I want to do a quick video uh, on the issue that I've been having with my uh, impact. Not really an issue, it's really uh, something that's been bothering me. Um, and let me explain that. When I go into the field to shoot this, and, uh, um, and I do a lot of pesting uh, on farms, and that sort of thing, when I take this thing along, I usually take it to go after pigeons and stuff like that, but I also put it in the 177 and have it in the 25 and the 177 in terms of the barrels. And so I take the 177 out there, uh, sometimes to go after the sparrows and starlings and that. And then when I'm going at pigeons for longer shots, I'll put the 25 barrel on it and go with that. But the thing that, uh, that has been bothering me that most of the time when I'm out there shooting, I have to use the fence post or I have to shoot, I shoot off of cement slabs to take a lot of those shots to steady the shot and uh, I'm afraid that I've, uh, I meet, as I feel down there, I can feel that's a little rough. Uh, sitting this bottle on there is kind of compromising it. So uh, a lot of times when I sit on there, I won't set my hand underneath it, I'll set it right there and, and hold a gun in that, in that fashion and take the shot. And so I want to protect this bottle a little bit more uh, from scarring and that sort of thing and as we know, this thing holds 4,500 pounds of pressure in there and so I don't want to start compromising this thing over there over the years as I scratch it more and more. So I want to deal with that issue and, uh, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. And also I did an upgrade on the barrel, on my 25 cal barrel in another video and uh, now I want to do the same thing here. And that entails just taking uh, some carbon fiber, um, I guess you would call it stick on vinyl or whatever and, 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 and it would be a protection for this barrel. I think it also Help to quiet it down a little bit because it is a metal barrel, and at the same time, I think that uh, it'll make it look a lot better. So we have two issues, two things we're going to deal with today. We're going to deal with trying to protect this bottle, and we're going to deal with uh, this barrel and just doing an upgrade on that in terms of the looks of it, and maybe something that would help quiet it a little bit also. Now, and, and now let me just talk about the materials we're going to need. You already see this 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 carbon fiber looking um, vinyl stick on. I'm just going to call it paper that you can stick on here. And this can be bought anywhere on eBay and those kinds of places. One thing I would say is this one is kind of shiny. Uh, if you can find one a little bit matted, uh, more of a matted finish, I would go with that. I'm going to go with this because I still like it. But it is a bit shiny, but that doesn't bother me. And then the other thing that we're going to use to protect this down here is, and I just happened to find this, that's why I'm doing this video. My wife had this stuff upstairs and she was doing something with it. This has been around here for a while, but what it is is on one side it's blue. And that, that blue is, uh, is rubberized. And on the other side is, uh, feels like it's, I don't know, almost like a felt like material, but uh, it's more of a cloth material. So that's what you got. But it does stretch. And because it's uh, rubberized, when I put it on here, I'm gonna, it's going to feel soft to the hand. And in the wintertime, when I'm shooting this thing and holding it, next, still touching that cold bottle, I'll be touching this. So we're going to cut this to length. So, uh, Let's, uh, let's change the camera position and uh, show you how we're going to do this. Uh, we'll start with doing the bottle first and then we'll go up from there, okay? Alright, let's go. Okay, we're back and let me show you what we're going to need for this. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get the diameter and the length of these things. So you're going to need some type of ruler. I have one here. I have a yardstick here that I'm going to use for that purpose. And I'll set that down here. You also need something to measure the diameter to this. Now if you have a tape that's fine, but in this particular case it doesn't have to be exact because you really do want, when you, when you get, and you'll see that later, but when I get to use this material here, you want it to overlap a little bit. You want it to lock onto itself, to tape onto itself, because it actually sticks to itself better than it does to, this, to the metal uh, at first. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the diameter. Now for me, I like to have something like this for when I'm measuring diameter. Something that once I've measured diameter, it'll pop back and I can put on the ruler a lot easier. So this is just a, this is just a tie. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, try to do it on camera for you here, stick that through, bring it around, bring this around, and bring this up and pull it tight. And if you see that, it, this is perfect to that. Okay, it's perfect. So now I know that if this is perfect, then I need to probably go a quarter of an inch past this eighth of an inch to a quarter inch past this. So now all I do is come down and get my, my ruler here, put it on the very end, 
and look at this and see that it is exactly seven and three quarters so I'm just gonna make it eight so we know that the diameter of this is eight inches now we want to deal with the length of it that we want to do and we want to put it before ball before it starts to make the rounded edges so I'm going to measure that and see what's best and I think that seven inches seven inches will be perfect for that so now we're looking by looking at eight by seven for that so we got those measurements down and we're ready to go there now what we need to do is determine the, uh, the diameter of the barrel so again I'm just going to use my tie here bring it bring it around bring it over until it touches and then try to touch that area where it touches just put my finger there and then, then, then pop it out and that's the actual diameter but I'm going to add an eighth of an inch to that so I bring my, my, my ruler up and I pull this over that's four so if I make, if I make this actually it's just under four so if I make this four I have my overlap so I'm going to make this about four and an eighth inches so we got four and an eighth here now we need to get the diameter of the barrel. In order to do that, we really need to slide the barrel out. And I've already loosened it back here so that we can take this barrel. So this barrel will pop out. And when I get the barrel out and get it down here, I can measure from front to back. And I see that this thing here is going to be... Uh, just under, I'm going to take that back, it's going to be the right there. So it's going to be 10 and 3 quarters inches for the length of this. Okay, now that we got our measurements for everything, now we need to just work with the materials. The materials we have again is this piece of, uh, this piece of stretch cloth that's, uh, that's going to work out just right for us because we want to, on this we want this to be exact because what we're going to do at the end is we're going to bring this around here and we're going to stretch it tight and we're going to, uh, sew it onto here. So we want that to be exact. We want that to be 7 by 8 exact. Then over here, we're going to take these pieces here and we're going to cut these the length that we talked about, 4 and 1 eighth and uh, 10 and 3 quarters uh, to actually cover this barrel. So I'm going to go away, cut those pieces and come back. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we've cut this piece here uh, to 7 by 8 and it's ready to go over here and we've also cut uh, the carbon fiber look for the barrel to the specified length also so now we're going to do those we're going to do I think I'll, I'm going to start this is going to be the hardest so I'm going to start with this first and I'm going to zoom in for you guys and show you how to get this done All right. so we'll be right back Okay, we're back, and I have our two pieces here, and I have my uh, needle and thread. So what we're going to do first is just wrap this around here. And the most important part of this, part, this, this start of this, and I'll try to do this towards you a little bit, is to get these two ends right here. Is to get these two ends perfectly together and start it. So you can slide it back for that, all the way back to here for that. And all you want to do is just take, take your needle and just get this first started, this first, first part started perfectly. Okay, so we're trying to get this perfect. We're going to bring it in, pull the thread through, and here's where you want to do your tie at. Okay, when you first start it, you're going to do a tie at this end because you're not going to, you're going to go down the other end and you're going to stop. So, basically all I'm going to do here is just take this and tie it, making sure it is perfect. And it is, and I'll flip that over. And uh, I'll, do a, I'll do a quick zoom on that. Okay. So now all we're going to do is just, uh, and you can do this very, very quickly. It won't take long because you ain't got to be perfect with this part now. Now that you got those two ends together, as you pull it, it's gonna, those two ends are going to stay together and so you're not going to have a problem. So you see I took the first one through and if you drew it together, I'll spin it over for you in a second. I'll, I'll put it through a few of these through there first. It's really not a hard process. <laughs> Probably the hardest process is going to be most people out there these days is having a needle and thread at home. No one has, no one has needle and thread anymore. Okay, so 
let me get a little bit further and then I'll just show you another close up of this. And then I'll just do one more close up and then I'll finish it up. Show you how to finish it up. But each time you go around it, the uh, seam goes in more and more. And I'll tell you one more thing as soon as I get this, this next one through there. Okay, that's good. I'm going to bring that thing straight up like that. And we're going to pull it down here to where it's actually going to be. And then we're going to finish it out. But right now we, we need room underneath the scope to finish this. But I'm, I'm going to stitch this down. Now what's going to happen is when I get finished and put the barrel in, this is going to be straight up. So you, this is never going to be seen again because it's going to be hiding right underneath that barrel perfectly. So let me finish that up and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm just finishing this thing up now. Just getting, uh, getting it, the end finished here. And then we'll be all set. So I just need to go through this thing a few more times. As you see, it's just that simple, just going around and around it uh, till you get to the end. When you get to the end, there you are. And this thing here is now covered. I can put it on fence post. I can do all kinds of things with it and not worry about it. I can lay it up against a post and not, not hurt it at all. Now, let me just see this right now. I know somebody out there is probably selling these already. So for those of you guys who don't tell me, oh, so-and-so selling those. I don't do it that way. I try to I try to do everything I can myself, and that's why. If I can do it myself, I'm not gonna pay somebody else to do it. It's just that's just my philosophy. Uh, in the house, when things used to break, uh, whatever it was, water heater, uh, had an electrical problem, plumbing problem, I would always start on it, and my wife would get mad, say, "Why don't you just call somebody?" And I would say, "You know what?" They're going to charge me the same amount whether I break it a little bit further or if I fix it. So let me take a chance on fixing it. And if I fix it, we save the money. If we didn't, they're going to still charge the same. And they're going to come on and say, wow, you know, you worked on it a little bit, so we're going to charge you 20% more. So, no, I, I'd rather do it myself. And I, got, and I get appreciation out of that. When I do it myself, I get appreciation out of it. Okay, that's the last one through. Okay, now we can just snip this needle off and go to the second part. Then we'll close this thing out like that. All right, let's get, let's get set up for the next part. Okay, we're back, and what I've done is I put a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel here. And what I need to do now is clean this really, really good to make sure that there's no uh, oils on it or anything, because if you know anything about this stuff, it will not adhere to uh, glue, and not adhere to an oily surface. So, just going to scrub that real good. Nice thing about it, the alcohol dries extremely fast, so there's no drying time. At the same time, it's a, it's a good agent for cleaning off oil. So, all right, all right, we have that part cleaned off. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to I want to make sure that uh, that this thing here adheres. And, and and one thing about metal, if you're working with metal, take it from me, uh, you want to warm it up. If, if it's it's cold now, it's winter time. Uh, and I'm in the basement, it's cold down here, probably in the, probably it's maybe 67, 68 degrees, maybe lower. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, warm this thing up so that this will adhere to it a little bit better. Okay, what I have here now is a torch. And all I'm going to do is just take this thing and go up and down the torch. And if you ever do this, and doing it on metal, you'll actually see the metal get blacker as the, uh, as the moisture gets off, especially if you don't use alcohol on it. And once it's warm to the touch, you're ready to go. And that'll, that'll stay warm for quite a few seconds, so no need, to, uh, no need for the torch anymore. All we want to do is peel our paper back, because it has a paper backing on it. And what I should note also is that not only does this have a paper on the bottom, it has a protective film on top. Make sure you take off that protective film before you finish it up. And now I can take it off here. And now it's just a matter of trying to get this barrel perfectly on here, which uh, is a lot harder than it may seem. But if you can get it perfectly started, then you won't have any problem at the end of uh, having it overlapping anywhere. 
that looks pretty close to me. So now, oops. So now what I want to do is make sure that's straight. And we're going to basically just roll it in the direction we want it to go. And doing this so that there won't be any any air bubbles in it. You don't want any air oops. You don't want any air bubbles in it. You can feel any air bubble. If you do it this way, you'll feel if there's any air bubbles in it and you'll force them out. And this seemed to be going around the perfect. I got lucky that time. And then you get it to overlap. And there you are. You have that. Um, I'm going to give you a better look at this in a moment. And then all you're going to do is this. Uh, you want to you, you want to do this in such a way. Now on this barrel here, because this is my 177, this barrel actually pulls out and in. Uh, so I can actually twist this so that, that seam is below the gun. So it can it can't be seen unless you're looking underneath the gun. Okay. If you're doing if you're doing the um, the 22 or the 25 cal, you can't do that. That doesn't twist. So make sure you start this in such a way. In relationship to the uh, into this this locking mechanism for the mirror, and make sure that that is down from that, not up from it. Okay, so if it goes in the gun this way, make sure your seam is down here, and you won't have that seam on top. And you can't, I can barely see it anyway. Uh, very minute line there. Okay, let's put everything back together and uh, take a look at what we've done and talk about. talk a little bit more about that, and then close this thing out. Okay, we're back and uh, we have this thing finished up. And I tell you, this is this is the part I like best. I mean, this this aesthetic thing that I did right here is nice. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can get a better look at it because I got lights up here and there, get the reflections off of it. I'll try to get a better shot of that for you. Uh, but but I really like what we've done to this bottom uh, because off the time when I'm in the field with this thing, what happens is I may have a cement wall here and I'm shooting at a pigeon or something, I set it on there and this is going to get scratched. If I put my hand under it, I don't put my hand under it because it, it hurts my hand so much. So I just down on it. And, uh, and what if I'm leaning against a fence post or a tree or something, I press the gun up against it, this side up against it, like that, and this gets get scratched. But now, and I'm telling you this, the bottle is kind of slick and cold, but this right here, it's, it's, it's really, really soft. It's, it's really tactile. I, I, I feel like I got a better grip on the gun with it. Um, and uh, it even looks better to me than all that little, all those little numbers and stuff that's on the bottom. So uh, we got that. Let me just do a quick zoom in on this, and I'll come back and we'll close this thing out. Okay, here's a close up of that barrel, and uh, and the part that I did. And I think that uh, you're gonna agree that uh, that is a bunch. Uh, better look for the barrel and I think that uh, that pad that's on the bottom of that bottle is really really uh, going to help out in the field when I'm shooting the gun and I know it looks almost like at this angle like that barrel is touching uh, the bottle with the uh, fabric that's on there now but it's not uh, and I just think it's it just gives the gun a better look but as I said earlier uh, I just think I just think that it gives it a better look. So uh, let's zoom back out and uh, close this thing out. Well, okay, this is this was just a quick video. Uh, I done something similar to this uh, in terms of the shroud. Uh, as a matter of fact, the exact same thing to my shroud on my uh, on my P15. And uh, I, I was down here looking at this bottle tonight and working on the gun, and it was like, wow, I need to do something about that. And so luckily, I looked around the house and. <laughs> My wife just happened to have this fabric here, which is perfect. I don't know what else I would have did without that. Uh, and if you can find it, uh, I'll bring that piece of that over here again. If you can find it, it's, it's I don't know, maybe to sell in the fabric store or whatever, but you'll find it on one side is a rubberized back and may, may not necessarily be blue, but it stretches. And the other side is going to be cloth. And the two of those make, make this thing here very, very uh, easy to grip. Gonna be, a lot, lot warmer in the cold, and now I can lay this thing down on abrasive uh, things and not worry about it getting uh, the bottle being damaged or, or scratched up and that sort of thing. So, just a quick video for you, uh, something that I was doing and 
maybe they help you out. Like I said, you know, there are people out here probably selling that, and if they are, it's a lot easier to just go and buy it. But for me, I just like the idea of trying to come up with uh, ways to uh, to do it myself <laughs> and save some money because, you know, I'm all about saving money. So with that, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful, and uh, we'll be trying to get some more videos out very soon. I want to thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for your subscriptions. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, keep it safe. We'll see you soon.